Hello, my name is David Yunk from JNI Armor. This tech talk will be about extended life transparent armor in our phase two program. We've got a lot of good, great successes and we're looking to get some help to transition these technologies to specific programs. The following slides will go over this and we look forward to working with you and enjoy the slides. First, I wanna tell you a little bit about JNI Armor. We're a transparent armor engineering company that innovates, develops, and protects our military and law enforcement. Our capabilities include eight autoclaves, five lamination lines, an ITO coding chamber, and multiple sole source contracting vehicles. Our capabilities are able to fabricate well over 120,000 parts per year. This is significant capability and poised to protect our warfighters. This phase two SVAR has an opportunity to develop solutions for one of the biggest challenges within the military. Currently more than 60% of tactical vehicle windshields are delaminated into the viewing area. As you can see from these pictures, that's not a good thing. It's not easy to see through a delaminated windshield and you need that visibility to be able to drive, navigate, and see the theater in front of you. This currently is creating a huge operational readiness gap that could affect the ability to support a wartime conflict. So the program goals for our, our SVAR is to one, identify leading causes for delamination and develop technologies to extend life beyond five years and significant goals beyond 10 years. Then transition these technologies to specific military platforms. Again, this cannot be stressed enough. This is a large issue with the tactical vehicle fleet. The US government indicates that TA is delaminating much faster than they hope for. They'd like to see greater than five years life, they're getting less than two in many applications. Current suppliers are delivering low cost solutions and when the parts fail, they're just rewarded with another contract. This is a scenario where we can't do lowest price wins. We need to develop better solutions with longer lifetime. For this reason, JNI Armor has been awarded $225,000 phase one and is currently in process in a $1.5 million phase two. The goals again, extend the life of the glass, increase ballistic protection, and develop a life prediction model to actually determine life of these different windows. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Then transition programs, we've already completed development of an amphibious assault vehicle vision block, but are looking to support Humvee, MTVR, MRAPs, other medium tactical vehicles, and the JLT program. This is a very exciting slide to talk about because we had successes in our phase one effort. In the phase one effort, we identified technologies to increase life, which included reducing the internal stress via processing, improved edge seal systems, and improved potting materials. This led to phase three production contracts supporting ballistic shields, a commercial product. This included reducing stress in the laminate, which reduced manufacturing costs. We had less scrap and we increased the ballistic V50 by over 300 feet per second. That's very significant and added additional protection to the law enforcement officers that use the shields. We currently have over six phase three production contracts based on our phase one effort, which has now led to additional viewport configurations. Just looking at these pictures, we can do everything from flat to curved to large curved and and machining of the edges. It's, we've got a lot of really awesome success in our commercial programs. Our phase two effort is continuing to advance different material solutions. And this slide's starting at the top right. We've already discussed advanced edge shield systems that we're developing in, at JNI Armor. Also advanced potting materials, systems that uh, fully cure in the th thick sections of a laminate with improved sealant. We're also looking at some new inner layers 
um, some cross-linked systems that are hydrophobic, meaning they repel water they, and proven for extreme environments. We're investigating advanced polymer systems for the spall side of the armor that will both improve protection and improves adhesion and dust durability. We're also investigating advanced hard coating systems that improve abrasion resistance. And below that, you know, we're, we're developing different lamination processes that reduce stress. Some coating systems we're investigating, one is a mud and rain repellent system for the glass surface. And another exciting one is a solar load reducing coating that goes on the exterior of the glass. This will reflect the heat coming from the sun back out into the environment, which will keep the laminate cooler. When you keep it cooler, that improves your ballistic capability because it doesn't get as hot. And obviously it increases the lifetime exponentially. By keeping the laminate cool, then there's less things that can drive into the system that are a function of temperature, i.e. moisture and uh, chemical byproducts from the environment. So these, all these advanced materials are anticipated to extend the life beyond five years, but some of these advancements in the, the out years of this program are intended to extend the life of transparent armor beyond 10 years. A part of our phase two program is to develop an accelerated aging life prediction model. These different technologies that we have will extend life, but we need a mechanism to be able to test them in an accelerated aging system, then translate that lifetime in the accelerated aging test to a real world life. And this model will be able to not only predict lifetime in the accelerated aging test, but also in different environments around the world, whether it's you know, cold Alaska or a hot desert or a hot, humid rainforest or near the ocean with, with other environmental concerns. We'll be able to predict the lifetime of our transparent armor in a multitude of different environments. With the ultimate outcome um, is for the, the Marine Corps and the services to be able to specify lifetime that they want and buy transparent armor on lifetime um, with the, uh, a goal of achieving glass that is greater than five years service life and, and extend towards hopefully 10 years. This is a perfect segue into this slide, market differentiation. How is JNI armor different than the rest of the transparent armor companies out there? And that's our solutions are being extended to last longer, to be more delamination resistant. Not only that, but we're developing a life prediction model that proves that, that showcases and translates accelerated aging life to real environmental life. Um, this is gonna do a number of things for the industry by having longer life transparent armor out there and a mechanism for the government to buy as a function of life, will save the government money. This will save lives through better visibility and protection by having windows you can see through. And it'll keep vehicles in service for longer. Um, as an example, how we're going to allow the government to buy at reduced prices for longer life is they'll be, again, be able to buy as a function of, of lifetime. And there's an example here. This is a very simplified example. You know, say Company A's transparent armor is $1,200 each, but only lasts a year. Company B's is 1,500 and lasts five years or $300 per year. You know, you can buy Company B solutions at a 25% premium in cost, but it's valued at a quarter of the price of Company A. And a little side note, um, we had a little space here to show that, yeah, we already had a phase three ballistic shield viewport to uh, save a life just recently. 
So we're also already making a difference. How are we gonna transition these technologies to platforms? Well, this is something that JNI Armor is doing different than the other transparent armor companies. We're working hand in hand with the vehicle manufacturers such as Oshkosh, BAE, and General Navistar on developing mechanisms to transition these extended life transparent armor technologies to their platforms. They've already responded very quickly with letters of support and interest to support the phase two program. And the reason is, is they this is a big problem with their vehicles, that they deliver a vehicle and one of the first things coming back is a delaminated window. So they're very interested in solving this problem to increase their reputation in the industry. How do we need help? Well, we could use some help from the program offices to help support us working with the vehicle OEMs to transition these technologies. So again, that acquisition strategy is we're already working with the vehicle OEMs, but we need help from the program offices to support the transition of these technologies to all the different platforms. And the government will benefit from this. We'll have better technologies. We've got solutions that are gonna last five years right now. And with some further development, we hope to extend that beyond 10 years. We have OEM partners, uh, BAE Systems, Navistar, AM General are kinda at the front pushing us to get these technologies to them. We have socioeconomic contracting mechanisms. We're a hub zone, we're a woman owned small business. We're, we're also 8A eligible and we'll apply to that program at the right time. All these technologies have IP protection that we can protect these under SBIR data rights. That gives a lot of great opportunities for the government for sole source contracting as well as limited rights to the government for their, their specific uses. And again, I can't stress that enough. We've got SBIR sole source contracting vehicles where everyone benefits. You know, coming from a DLA, if they contract us, they also get the hub zone and the woman zone and eventually the 8A credit on top of that. So the big thing that we're missing right now is support from the program offices to make this program a success. Where are we and what is our current status? Well, we've already completed the phase one program. We've already had some successful transition to some phase three programs for ballistic shields. We developed a partnership with BAE Systems transitioning technologies to the AAV program and some Humvee windows. And then unfortunately, the rest of this has kind of moved to the right. COVID's kind of had an impact on some things. But our next uh, vehicle platforms that we're transitioning to include Humvee, MTVR, MRAP, and the FMTV. Then after that, later, probably closer to 2022, we're looking to transition to some other platforms, including LVSR, MUTV, and then start working into some boat programs. And probably mid-2022 to 2023, we look to transition these technologies to the JLTV program, and then some further boat programs, such as the PDX, the Army's boat program, and it, as well as the SOTV program. So again, if you're listening to this and you're in a program office of one of these programs we're targeting, uh, we're looking for you. We're looking to get your help. The OEMs are looking to get your help. And uh, we're looking forward to a lot of successful programs with better technologies. Thank you again for the time to review these slides and our progress on this very important phase two SBAR. Again, we're looking to see how we can fill in some of the holes to make our transition to production programs very successful. The key elements, we're looking to work and start working with the program offices on these targeted programs to make those programs successful. But in addition, if you have a vehicle program 
or in need with transparent armor that has a delamination issue, give us a shout and see how we can help you out. We're looking forward to those programs for a lot of successes. Thank you again. Have a great day. Find us, and we look forward to talking.